welcome to Horse Player Happy Hour. This is our show for Thursday, August 19th. It might be rainy out there in Saratoga, but that has done nothing to dampen our spirits ahead of a big weekend of racing. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornital, back with you in the Degenerate Flop House. Once again, I was doing my head count for, for all the people who are going to be here over the next two weekends. Oh, this flop house is going to be living up to its name. They're going to be sleeping in the bathtub. It's going to be very entertaining. Photos will be taken. I am joined on the show for, for the first little while. The man, he's, he's usually always here. Today, he's he's got to run out, but he was kind enough to, to at least do the first uh, 30 minutes or so a, as a cameo from an undisclosed location in New England, looking uh, very nice with his new equipment and uh, clean-cut looks. He is <laughs> Matt Bernier. Matt, what's up, my man? What's happening, Pete? Yeah, cleaned it up a little bit, went over the other day, and my wife was like, do you really need to do that? Do you really need to? Because she much prefers the beard. And I said, don't worry, it'll be back soon enough. But it's nice every once in a while to see what my face looks like without it on there. <laughs> looking looking good. It does it does de-age you a little bit, but, you know, yeah. that's uh, that's the kind of thing that can go, you know, that, that could be a, a positive or a negative. Let's start off, we, we got so much going on. You know, we want to tell folks why we're here. Oh, that reminds me, I have to... I could tell producer Craig to do this, um, but I'll, I'll do it myself. I want to send out the tweet on my uh, on my Twitter as well. Get a few more bodies in here. Horse player happy hour. This is our interactive show. So I'll say right away, uh, right off the rip for people who are um, participating and viewing us live. Let us know who you like in Saratoga's eighth race. Matt Bernier, I'll throw that very same question um, immediately to you. What, what's going to be what's going to be your approach in here? Who do you wish you had in the contest? Who are you betting in real life, if anybody? Yeah, I'm going to bet Vegas weekend. I, I just thought she was interesting coming in here for Fausto Gutierrez, a, a barn that doesn't have a ton of runners, but typically they are well spotted and well placed. I can't help but think this is, I know it's only, you know, a $50,000 claiming event, but to come from Indiana after a victory against N1X types and show up here in a spot like this, I just think it, it's a pretty confident move. I think she should work out a decent enough trip. Wouldn't go any lower than five to two, but I wanted to give Vegas weekend a look. All right, I think that makes uh, I think that makes sense. J.K. had this one one two seven in his picks that I that I saw on on TV. I, I couldn't shake the idea though that the six battle bling could be loose in this spot. Do you give this runner any count in here? Uh, dro- getting back onto the dirt and and dropping significantly. Yeah, I, honestly, I think that's the bigger concern for me is that Vegas weekend ends up in some sort of a, I don't want to say a duel. It's almost a darn if you do, darn if you don't position where if you allow Battle Bling to just get out there and waltz on the front, maybe you have too much work to do. But at the same time, if you're going to be the one to keep a horse like Battle Bling company early on, does that kind of sap some of the energy out of you for that stretch run? Um, I still just thought maybe it could end up being a two speed number. And even if it doesn't end up being six, seven, maybe the seven can get the better of the six. My only concern is they do go too fast early on, as we kind of saw from Battle Bling. I know it's not apples to apples, that turf race now with an off-the-turf or a, a wet main track race here this afternoon. But she went very fast chasing a pace last time out and faded late. Um, that would be my only concern about these two hooking up. That is a possibility. We'll start out with some shout-outs. Uh, shout-out to Chester, who's watching. Shout-out to Lucy, who says, good afternoon. John C. is with that idea of the, the six-horse Artie McCarty, if that is your real name, uh, says to pay attention to Mike Maker and Luis Saez. That's surely been something that uh, has been a good idea to do throughout the throughout this uh, throughout this entire meet. That would send you right to, to Lightning Lou. We'll see how the trip works out for that one, but we appreciate the the intel. Chris Couples making a comment about our leaderboard, which we haven't seen yet. But a spoiler alert: David Browning. <laughs> the guy. The guy is unbelievable. It's, and, and we actually had a funny conversation off air with with producer Craig, who finally, by the way, is getting into the spirit of this whole happy hour concept, which I will right now with uh, one of my favorite beers from Walton Whitman Brewing Company down the line. There he is toasting us, producer Craig, uh, on the sidewall there. I'm going to pop my uh, I'm going to pop my Dick Murphy light here. I got uh, fizz all over myself, but it stayed away from the computer. So that's the important thing. We used to do these shows from Walton Whitman. Now they're doing it from the DG flop house, sometimes the Brentwood, but they're, uh, they are still supplying the beer. So they get, uh, they get an opportunity for, for a shout out. As far as that goes, Wayne Leffler is with the one um, Townsend asked a question about Bob Baffert and his license. That one's ongoing. We'll, we'll report on that news as we have it. We don't have it now. Um, 
I don't understand Judith's question. You're going to have to um, specify a little bit more there. Um, Lucy gives us the thumbs up. And then uh, Truman says hello as well. So we got a lot of comments already, which I like to see. A lot of people watching along. Again, part of the point of this show is you're part of the show. Let us know any questions. Uh, races coming up. Races on the card. Betting strategy. Um, Matt's been having some interesting conversations on Twitter. We might have to rehash here a, a little bit as well. We're going to try to do a runner-by-runner runner look at the Pacific Classic between this eighth and ninth race at Saratoga as well. So we got a lot going on as they pop the latch at Saratoga. And uh, contrary to my little theory, the six not loose at all. The six uh, uh, broke okay, but the seven uh, gets the best of these early. And uh, I imagine that's a position you're pretty uh, pleased with. Stop the race. Stop the race. <laughs> End it now. Uh, yeah, no, look, I'm, I'm very, you know, it just looks like she's going an honest clip out there. That would be my only concern. She's already put three on the field. So, um, you know, we'll find out. But again, I, I, I'm always curious when, connections like this go to a track that they don't typically run at. I, I usually look at that as a positive and maybe I'm reading too much into certain things, but you know, I mean, that's the nature of this game. You probably try to read too much between the lines and you end up making your head spin. But um, I always look at that sort of thing and I go, well, that's interesting that they're here in a spot like this. And if she gets taken and they win the race, really no harm, no foul. They're going to make out of uh, make out with a pretty good payday, but she's going to have to get the job done here. It's uh, it's it's looking like they're going to make a race of it. That that would be my prediction, unless this is just a breather. Um, Battle Bling coming up on the outside of Vegas weekend with Lightning Lou um, and suspended campaign, looking like they're both in with shots. But if Vegas weekend can rebreak from here, um, it it could uh, it could, could prove victorious. I do think the six uh, appears to be traveling a little bit better at the moment. We'll see what happens when the battle joins in earnest here as everybody else is falling away. The seven appears to be all in. The six still swinging up on the bridle. We'll have to see if uh, if the seven can re-break here in the stretch or if anything comes in from the back. Um, seven trying uh, down at the rail and the six now uh, all in as well. So uh, what do you think here? You have a chance to re-rally down there at yeah, the wood? Yeah, I think I'm coming back on the inside. Yeah, I, um, I think it's going to be a real horse race uh, uh, from here. Come but on. Yeah, you've got uh, – you're punching through. You're punching back through on the inside to take this thing. That was a good pick, Matt. And it's always nice when you have that that little moment of I'm not so sure how this is going to go, and, and then and then you can get the win. Well, and we brought it up, too, before the race went off. Granted, it may not have played out the way that we thought it would with the six going and the seven sitting. It still ended up being a two-speed number where the two horses that were one, two throughout, they went effectively one, two throughout, even if the six may have poked ahead in front at one point in deep stretch. But – I think those are always things that you want to keep an eye on. And no, you're not going to be able to retire off of that exact a five to two over nine to five, but it's still better than a poke in the eye. The money spends, the money That's still it. spends. <laughs> and, and I, I, you know, I'm a big believer in the, the better a short price than a long face with, with a lot of the stuff, preserving True bankroll and, and being right and, and coming through. Uh, that's important. And, you know, I mean, $7 horse is not, is not a, People don't, I think, always appreciate the difference between being able to key around a $7 horse as opposed to something a little bit shorter in the uh, in the odd spectrum. Okay, so I guess there was a pony on the track that, that had a, a tail that was extremely short. Um, Chris takes the guess that uh, the, 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 a pasture mate maybe took a chunk out of it. That reminds me of one of the more famous short-tailed horses in recent memory, American Pharaoh. Um, wh who apparently had that that short tail in the early part of his three year old year because of uh, because of Mr. Z, who yes. was his his paddock mate, who who took a chunk of that tail off, and I think it was Nick Tamaro who wryly observed that that was the last time Mr. Z was ever going to get the better <laughs> of American power. <laughs> and well said, and congrats to Nick Tamaro <laughs> on on a new gig, track announcer down at uh, Sam Houston. Yes, that, I'd heard about that. I wasn't sure when that was. When that announcement was coming out, but very, very cool. You know, he does a great job. He's such a keen race watcher and obviously got a great command of the language and love listening to the guy talk. So it's a, a perfect role for him. Very, very um, exciting stuff. As Pete, I got a quick goes. question for you before we dive into wherever we're going to go next. And yeah. maybe this is this is more international. And I know you guys have been putting out great content about the races over there in the UK. Uh, the, the performance from Mishriff, it, you know, it sounded like John Gosden was very much open to the idea of a Breeders' Cup run, although I heard him after the in the post race bring up the idea of the mile and a half, meaning the turf. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. Is is he had also at one point mentioned that the mile and a half in Europe, which granted is not the same as the mile and a half here, 
He thought that that may have been just a, a bit of a, a run too far as opposed to the mile and a quarter. I mean, is there any scenario you see them going to the dirt given the way he ran over in the Saudi Cup as opposed to the mile and a half turf? Or am I crazy? The, the, the vibes seem to be that he's, it's not going to be the dirt, okay. which, which is – that's just vibes I'm getting. I, that's what I would want to see. And sure. I feel like for his future stallion value to – I feel like that Breeders' Cup Classic would mean something more than the Saudi race, despite all the money that was involved there. But I don't know. I mean, the fact that they were – I never heard anything about this, but just using logic, they ran in the Saudi race, and then they had – I mean, they were going to be a big favorite if they came back and, and ran in Dubai. Yep. And the fact that they skipped that spot. I mean, maybe he took a knock. I mean, horses – a lot of horses, they'll run on dirt once, and then physically, if it's not a pleasant experience for them – you know, they, they, they won't run on as well again. And or connections will say, eh, maybe this isn't for us. And there's really no reason for them to like come out and say that it feels to me like the, with, you know, they doesn't seem to want the, what I'm going to guess is going to be the, the, the not great ground. That's going to be on offer come the arc and champions day. Now, granted, the Ark is of such a place of prominence, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they decide to go there. But the Ark is also, as you point out, a more testing mile and a half than the multi-turn affair of the Breeders' Cup turf. It feels to me like he'd be much more likely to get the mile and a half on the good ground, firm ground maybe even, actually definitely, given where it is this year, Del Mar, of the Breeders' Cup turf. And then he's apparently, I have don't have confirmation on this, but I think because of the Judmont win, he's running for a massive bonus at the Japan Cup. So assuming I have the spacing of these races right in my brain, um, I think it I think it feels like maybe we got a good chance for Breeders' Cup turf and um and Japan Cup. And you could still do one of the other, I think, of Champions Day or the Arc um in the mix there. So it's going to be a fascinating story to follow what they do with this incredibly talented horse. One of many to put on shows at the fantastic uh, York Ebor meeting, one of the great race meetings in the world. Uh, one of these things where when I, once I master this being in two places at once thing, I'm going to go every year. I, I thought it was just such a visually impressive performance and I, I couldn't help, but you know, you hear other people talk about it and you know, when you hear them bring it up, you go through and look and you go, Oh, this, this actually makes sense that maybe he's just not a true mile and a half type in Europe anyway. And, and again, to your point, then that all of a sudden brings into question a race like the arc over that kind of a, a, a track and likely what kind of ground you may end up getting as opposed to the mile and a half over here where it is going to be, I mean, I'd be stunned if we had anything less than firm, firm going yeah. the beginning of November down in San Diego, but anything, you know, crazier things have happened, but it did make me think again about the breeders cup classic in that he's proven that he can handle dirt. That's not an issue. Uh, we've talked about that classic division and we'll talk about the Pacific classic here in a moment with some of these horses that, you know, th this looks like a really good race, but I don't know that anybody's shaking in their boots from anybody that would come out of this one. Well, if you take out Nick's go and we'll find out what happens in a race like the jockey club and we'll find out what happens on Saturday in the P, in the P classic. I don't know. I would look at it and think $6 million or whatever the purse is right now for the classic mile and a quarter, which seems to be mischief's trip. I would at least have to think about it, no? That, that's where I want him to run. Make no mistake. I'm just saying what I think is going to happen yeah, with, totally. with, with tea leaf reading. I think the classic would be an amazing spot for him. He'll, I don't think he'd be any worse than, certainly no worse than third choice in the betting, and, and maybe higher than that, especially if, if Nick's go um, ends up not having the ideal preparations heading, heading in that direction. So it's a great story to follow. We're going to have a lot of great international participation this year for the Breeders' Cup. More um, exciting win in your action for, for the Breeders' Cup tomorrow in the Nunthorpe, where Golden Pal looks ideally suited to me to, uh, to, to that test. That'll be worth watching. Should be about 1030 tomorrow morning. See if he can build on that and, and come back to the to the Breeders' Cup sprint. It's always fun. I love the cross pollination between the Breeders' Cup and the and the top European racing, and it's something that uh, I think is just going to continue to to improve um, the connection between the two and be something that we're betting on more and more in the USA. Uh, especially, I mean, this is I'm, I'm jumping like four moves ahead here, but another thing I'm really excited about with the advent of fixed odds betting on 
uh, USA racing, which seems like it's imminent, at least in certain states, the ability to bet fixed prices on the on the foreign racing, I think is going to make a lot more people pay attention. It's something we're going to be covering more and more here on the in the Money Media Network. Let's look at this leaderboard. We see David Browning's name on top. Unbelievable. I, I think I might just bet a cold 3-5 double here. Um, I don't know. Maybe he's had his winners for the day. <laughs> he, he, you know, he doesn't have this wrapped up by any means, but I mean, it sure seems like he's going to be getting tour points again. And with a big finish here at, uh, at, at Saratoga, he might do so in style, cementing his place on top of that leaderboard. So he was throwing a perfect game. Five for five. And then that last race happened, but I mean, <laughs> still, I mean, he, he got through, we are not playing nine innings quite eight, only eight innings this afternoon, but I mean, that's not a bad showing. No, that's not bad at all. And his nearest pursuers, it's worth noting, both have a four to five favorite that he could, he'll chuckle if that wins. Like that's not the, you know, that, that not likely to, to throw him over. Um, it'll be fun to watch. He, uh, we got to check in with him because this run has continued. It is interesting. I, I do feel like he was one of the ones lobbying to go back to Thursday. He did, he did get a score at least on one of the Friday shows we did, but he's the, you know, he's your third, the king of the Thursday uh, contest is David Browning. And it, it's a good opportunity, I think, to tell folks about these two extra breeders cup betting challenge seats. The fact of the matter is someone could catch a flyer and, and run David down still for the top seat, even if they haven't played in an event yet, the way our rules are structured and the fact that you can get multiple scores in in one game. I mean, we've seen on tours impossible upsets happen with uh, uh, Paul Sherman getting run down by Dave Goodfriend the other year, and then even last year with, with Dylan Donnelly getting getting run down in controversial uh, fashion, but still getting run down on the, on the, the, the NHC tour so so that seat is still up for grabs but i think more of more interest to the newer players and uh, something to get people to be paying attention to wanting to part with their money in this contest aside from the charity aspect which we'll get to um is the fact of this second seat for the the playoffs as we're calling them as we start to draw a little bit more near to those matt i'll let you explain to people how the playoffs work this 80 person tournament we're going to be running for the last few weeks of this year's horse player happy hour tour in, in a nutshell you run in the top 10 of one of these happy hours you accrue points from 100 down to 10 at the end of the regular season we take the top 80 whoever those people are as far as the overall points leaders are concerned uh well i should say that that piece let me, let me rephrase that the that piece for the regular season we're talking about whoever has the most points ends up winning a bcbc seat if you run in the top two in any of one of these events you end up qualifying for the postseason we go on from that point um but the, the big piece is that you've got two full ten thousand dollar bcbc seats up for grabs and you brought up the fact that david browning while he's got a lead it's not an insurmountable lead we still have a ways to go throughout this thing what do we have still uh, almost two full months worth of contests and you it's your top eight scores that count so just because you may be a little bit farther down the pecking order right now, that doesn't mean that you don't put together a couple of big weeks. You end up picking up 60, 70, 80 points. And before you know it, you throw two or three of those together, you're making giant leaps up toward the top of the leaderboard, which right now sits at, at 540. But um, I, I just think the combination of that plus the postseason, which again will whittle down basically by half until we get to a final table of 10. And whoever wins that ultimately gets that second BCBC seat for a $10,000 buy-in. Um, I think it's a, a nice opportunity to continue playing. And even if you feel like you're out of range with the point standings for the regular season, which I disagree, but if you feel like you're out of it, you can still play week in and week out and try and finish in the exact, punch your ticket to the postseason and go on that route. And so the, 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 there's 20, how many, actually, let me tell you exactly. There are 24 games in total. This is game 18. So we've got, we've got a little bit less than we said. There's five okay, more. Weeks. Yeah, five weeks. including today, six, five more to come. And so so those players, the top two from those are part of that 80 runner field. But then there's another 30 spots that are just going to go to the top people on the tour who Correct. didn't already punch their tickets. So it's a real way to reward those unlucky people who have thirds, fourths and fifths, but have built up a profile. And with the ability to play three entries, you could come in cold. And have an ability to crack that that number even now and have a chance at that ten thousand dollar seat and by the way if you finish in the top two you punch your ticket uh uh automatically yes michael michael tomabil underlines that idea um who didn't already 
uh, punched their ticket. Michael in great shape there um, on the on this leaderboard in uh, hanging out there in second place. Michael doing some great work for In the Money Media covering the the Colonial race. Has been appreciating his contributions and, and looking to do um, a little bit more with him as well. Hopefully down the line and, and appreciate his support in these uh, in these events. Absolutely. I mean, look, this is the it's the beauty of what you all uh, in the money have done. You've opened up sort of your your doors to to folks who are, you know, diehard week in and week out, day in and day out folks who they want to have an opportunity to get their voice out there a little bit. I have people ask me all the time, you know, how, what's the best way to kind of position myself to get my voice heard? I go, well, hey, you got to have decent, decent opinions. And I'm not saying that, you know, you I'm not saying that you can't be just someone who's a, a commentator or someone who just offers up a few different things and still make your way through. But I think you need to have opinions that people look at and say, you know what, that makes sense, as opposed to just throwing random stuff against the wall. And if you can get sort of an, an opportunity with, with a group like In The Money Media to open up the, you know, get your name out there a little bit more and get people more familiar with you from a mainstream standpoint, I think that that goes a long way. So uh, tip of the cap to you, PTO. Well, you say you, I say we, because, you know, the, the whole <laughs> YouTube channel is uh, was basically created by you. And, and you know, I think the, the key move we made early on was getting you in the mix. And, and it's been fantastic having you uh, on side this whole time and just continue to enjoy your work over on the Matt Bernier show, as well as, uh, as well as the, the, the TV stuff you've been doing and, and uh, then guesting on other shows as well, including, uh, including a recent episode of uh, Redboard Rewind. Yep. If folks want to check out the podcast, you can, you can see everything we've got through the main feed, the in the money media feed. You can find that wherever you get your podcast. iTunes seems to be the most popular place, but Spotify we're on there as well. Really again, wherever you get podcast you you can look uh you can look for that oh michael's asking for a little clarification i believe the way the rules are is you can get up to three tickets for the finals if you get them through the exacta okay like up to three through the exacta but the field will be rounded out by people who don't even have one ticket to the finals the idea now i gotta make sure it's written exactly that way in the rules but that was my that was the idea behind it is to really you know, almost like a bad beat bonus it, for people who have really put in the time and tried to get to those finals, but haven't been able to. There will be people, uh, I assume there will be people who have three exacta finishes, um, perhaps David Browning among them. I'll have to look at the, the, the specifics of the scores. It's kind of fun on that leaderboard. You can click and look deeper and see which finishes and which games. And there's, there's a lot of good data. If you go to that to that uh, to that website, you know what we haven't said yet. We need to say this before we. Um, I do want to do this. Look at the Pacific Classic before you have to jet, Matt. But uh, pointing out that twenty bucks, the game is only twenty dollars to play, and the the house cut goes entirely to aftercare charities. So the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation and the Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance. So we always say, just come on in, and even if you're not um, capped up, play all the fours. Pop, plop down your 20 bucks and support this great cause. Cause the more that we support ideas like this, the more we'll be able to do player friendly initiatives that also help the industry like this. And that's what we're, that's what we're all about. Shall we, shall we pivot to Del Mar, my friend? Let's do it. All right. I want to run through this race. I have not, you have gone much deeper than me. So this will be like a little bit of an experiment here where we're, we're talking through, I'm still formulating my final opinion. So I, I want to just, talk through this field with you we've got uh nine runners and uh the we let's just let's just yap about them from the rail out we start with tripoli uh closer for john sadler this horse that ran second in the san diego maybe a little bit against the flow splitting express train and royal ship do you see much reason for for tripoli five to one installed on the morning line to potentially reverse the form um with the winner from the San Diego who was express train. I do. I think uh, there have been enough people that I know and respect their opinions to tell me that that day at Del Mar inside wasn't where you wanted to be. I went back and watched. I don't know that I totally believe that. I don't know that I'm fully all in on that theory because I was trying to find out why Royal ship who had a seam at the top of the lane shot down to the inside, why he didn't just punch on through because I was very taken by his two runs out at Santa Anita up against country grammar. It's so much so that I actually voted him number one in the Breeders' Cup Classic poll that goes out weekly. And I was, I'm sure, the only one who had voted him number one. When he lost that San Diego, I thought it was disappointing. 
He's run, let's call it, iffy at Del Mar in the past. So I'm starting to wonder if for Royal Ship, and we'll get to him in a moment, full-blown, that maybe he has a little bit of an issue there. Tripoli, however, has only run on the main track twice. He's paired up buyer tops of 100 in each of those. And yes, he was parked way out wide. So if your theory is that inside isn't where you wanted to be, outside may have actually been beneficial for him. But he carried an enormous amount of ground that day. And to only lose by a half length rallying into, let's call it a tepid pace, I thought it was a big effort. And I think there's a real chance that we haven't seen the best from this horse. Also keep in mind, this is me, tinfoil hat. <laughs> Sadler, Ronus Racing involved with Rock Your World. Rock Your World for a moment was discussed running in this race. Instead, they said, we're going to wait for the Del Mar Derby, which is a three-year-old race on turf. If you want to say it was because they want to run him on grass, not going to argue with you. I also look at it and say, if you're confident in the charge that you already have pointed to the Pacific Classic, no sense in running another one. So I think Triple E has a big chance. Very good analysis. I do think that the, the rail was probably not where you want it to be that day, but it's always hard when a horse is maybe with the track, but also... I feel pretty comfortable saying was against the flow. So I, I can definitely see the case. I think Tripoli has to be considered at least, at the very least, a peripheral contender. Let's talk about number two, Tis a Magician for uh, Dick Mandela and Flavion Pratt. Another one installed at five to one on the morning line has been found wanting against grade one company in the past. You think this horse can step up? My only concern is just that he's been exposed against this level of company in the past. I like him a lot. I think he's a nice horse. He's really flourished ever since Mandel has really stretched him out to the marathon distances out at a mile and a half. I thought he ran much better than that. Almost 12 length defeat in the Brooklyn will suggest two starts back because he eventually essentially reared up at the start and completely blew the, the gate break for him to run second that day. I thought was really good. And again, Lone Rock came back and just flattered that form at Saratoga in the Birdstone. I think Tis a Magician is good. I'm not convinced that he's this good against this kind of runner at a distance that's a little bit shorter than ideal. I think he's best out at a mile and a half as opposed to the mile and a quarter. Dr. Post is a runner I've been a very big fan of throughout his career. He, I loved him in the Monmouth Cup, and he made no mistake getting the job done and making the 5-2 to two look like a gift. The race was probably run to suit, I think, in the big picture of life. The bigger question for him, for me, might be uh, down to the distance. Does the son of Quality Road out of a Hennessy mare really want to go a mile and a quarter? How did you answer that question, Matt? You, you and I have approached him entirely differently. I have never liked him throughout my his career. He's just one of those horses that I feel like is very grindy. But that Monmouth Cup, I will say, going back and watching the tape, uh, to me, that was the best he's ever looked. And he beat a field that I think when you first look at it, you're going to go, eh, how good were they actually? Night Ops came back and earned, I believe, a 101 buyer in his next start. So he beat a decent enough horse there. It's also worth noting that was the first time Dr. Post had ever had blinkers. The fact that Pletcher and company are going to send him out to Del Mar basically as a dry run to find out if he can handle the main track, knowing the Breeders' Cup Classic is going to be out there. Pletcher has effectively said that in some of the interviews that he's done. And he's also drawn the comparisons to Vino Rosso. They did the same thing with Vino Rosso going out to Santa Anita when he won the Gold Cup. And then they knew going back to the Breeders' Cup Classic, he was going to be in decent shape. Another horse that greatly improved with a little bit of an equipment change um, to me, he could either win by five or finish off the board. I wouldn't be surprised with either of them. Uh, I made him five to one. I don't think you're going to get that kind of price, but he is arguably the most polarizing in the field to me. That's a good analysis. And I, I feel like that's about the right price too. And I think you're probably right that he'll go there a little bit shorter than that. Let's talk about number four, Royal Ship. Um, maybe a, a hair disappointing, at least on the face of things in the San Diego, but this would be the runner if you were thinking it wasn't a day where you wanted to be on the rail. And, and there've been a bunch of runbacks who've done okay, who were on the rail and have improved their figures. If that narrative is correct, this horse could be sitting on a very big race second off the layoff. This was the one, um, if you just if you had gone first and just said, Pete, who's going to win? I, I would have told you a story about Royal Ship. I mean, and again, I made it clear how how highly I thought of this one after they gelded him those two runs at Santa Anita on the main track. I thought they were both a Breeders' Cup classic caliber performances. And then he goes into San Diego. And again, if the inside isn't where you wanted to be, then yes, he ran much, much better than that running line would suggest. I look at it and I also saw some people bring up the fact that he had a trip. I, I don't. I, to me, that's the perfect pocket trip. And all of a sudden it opened up and he just couldn't kick on with it. 
if he come if he runs back to either of those two Santa Anita races, he's probably just better than this horse. He's probably going to win. But you go through the two runs at Del Mar on the main track were both terrible. Granted, one of them came before he was gelded. Part of me wants him to prove to me or, or show me that I was actually right thinking that he's that good. <laughs> There's also a part of me that thinks you're not going to get the price that you need to find out from a gambling standpoint. I made him four to one. I think he probably goes off favored in here. And to me, that's just too short. So I'm going to sit back and watch. Maybe he can get the job done, but it's going to be purely from a rooting standpoint from my eyes. Another one who's going to take a lot of money in this spot installed as the three to one morning line favorite. And I'd have trouble making him uh, too much higher than that based on the known form express train, the winner of the San Diego. I mean, did so, uh, did so impressively got a, a figure that uh, you know, one-on-one on the buyer scale has been proven at the grade one level prior to that. I, I don't know. Something about express train leaves me a little bit, a little bit cold in this spot. There's, there's some part of me that's wanting to say that last time was the time, but I mean, gosh, if you take that race, that last race at face value, um, you know, grant that pressing outside maybe was a, was a, was a beneficial thing, but I still think it was a very nice run and I'm not going to be dismissing the horse in my horizontals. That's for sure. I thought he ran really well. I'm with you on the price. I made him four to one, but I do believe you could make the argument. He's the horse to beat. Uh, if you have concerns about Royal ship's ability to handle the Del Mar main track, it's the complete opposite with express train. He loves the Del Mar main strip. He's three for four, four times in the exacta. I've always thought longer is better, despite the fact that he's 0 for 2 at a mile and a quarter. I think he's run really well in both of those races. Um, the thing for me is he is what he is. He's a 99 to 102 or 103. If that's good enough to win on Saturday, he's going to be right there. If Royal Ship can jump back to that 105 or the 109 or whatever it was that he ran at Santa Anita, Express Train is probably running for second or third. Uh, I think there's a, a scenario in which Dr. Post takes a big step forward. If that's the case, Express Train, I don't know that you're going to get a forward move. Put it that way. I think if this race, if the winner earns a 100 or a 101, it's probably Express Train. If it's above that, I think it's probably somebody else. Let's talk about Magic on tap quickly. It looked a deserving long shot to me, and I didn't have too much to add to that. Uh, to me, just it looks a little bit tough. I, I think he's slow right now at this point. I'm also not convinced that added ground is going to be to his benefit. I think he may be better a little bit shorter. Um, you always have to respect Baffert in a grade one, but to me, this one is just wanting. Number seven, Independence Hall is a horse who's flashed an immense amount of potential, uh, but is disappointed on a couple of occasions recently, uh, most recently being beat at three to five in the Californian after not really seeing out what uh, the trip in a race where I thought he was going to take a lot of beating back in the Santa Anita handicap. You never need to twist my arm to include Michael McCarthy. The blinkers go on. Is that going to be enough to make a difference with this one? I will I will die on this hill. He, he is not a mile and a quarter horse. He, uh, to me, he's a one-turn one turn mile or seven eighths of a mile. He can get a mile and an eighth in certain instances because he's that talented. I don't think the horse wants any part of the distance, especially off of a layoff. I think he's going to be better going shorter. He's a complete toss for me. The eight and the nine both have uh, big prices hung next to their names. Sheriff Brown and Cupid's Claws. Any chance for an in the money squeak with either of those for you? I've got nothing for either of them. I just think they're overmatched in here. Maybe the distance is okay, but I still think they're going to be so far back and have so much to do that it won't matter. We're going to be using tag team tactics on the show, Matt. I think you, you, you're meant to uh, be taking off about now. Do you, have, do you have another minute to say hi to your, uh, to your replacement on today's show, or do you need to jet? No, absolutely. Just a, a quick sign off, and she was giving me a hard time on social. It was not a matter of I didn't want to sit there and chat with Michelle. <laughs> Howard said that he had Michelle for the podcast. I said, you're in good hands. You don't need me then. She knows a hell of a lot more than I do not, anyway. So just he, he straight up said, he was like, on. oh, I, I was going to have Matt come on. But then I told him that you were on, and he was like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> that is not how it went at all. <laughs> and I was like, damn. That is not Howard, at all how it went. How, Howard seems like a mild-mannered, uh, you know, uh, school oh, teacher. But he's he's, stir he's stirring the pot here, I think. He's trying to make a name for himself by creating beef between you two. That's what I think <laughs> is wrong. If I didn't want to be on with Michelle, I would have said, she can't be the second part of the show, Pete. She, she, you got to find somebody else. <laughs> Kinchin has done that to me. You know, Kinchin has vetoed many guests. You know, he's got he, that guy has no, a list of grievances. Come on now. A list of grievances <laughs> as long as your arm. 
And he'll no, you're on the good list, Michelle. You, you at some point you abused him in a production meeting and, and it got close. He was like, a, Michelle has one strike. If she gets two more, she's <laughs> she's out. But but you've never you've never approached that. But uh, you know, other other people are not are not so are not so lucky. Hey, um, yeah. Michelle Yu is joining us here. We need to introduce you properly. Um, we love her. You know her from uh, such places as uh, the, the simulcast world and uh, and international coverage of horse racing and on her own fantastic podcast with Billy Koch on the In the Money Media Network, The Owner's Box. Michelle, how are things? I'm doing really well. Just fresh out of the shower and the pool. Fantastic. It was a good day over there at the pool. It looked like you guys were having fun. Yeah, we did. It was, a, it was actually a good time. Sometimes it just mostly ends up in me screaming at my kids, but today it was actually fun. So that's good. I can come here with a smile. Although I am hiding out in like the bunker right now. So if I get really red, it's because it's sweltering in here. Um, but this is the only way I can like not be around my children when I do this. <laughs> we, you know, we're very used to, to animal interruptions, child interruptions. It doesn't matter. Don't, don't hold out on our behalf as far as that goes. Well, you watch Let's... out. Olivia will come and take out an, uh, an earbud here. She'll like <laughs> jump right on the show. I've seen that move. I've seen that move before. <laughs> um, and mine might do the same thing. Perrin, um, inside right now watching some manner of television show. So we should be okay. But, you know, people enjoy the interruptions. We've got two minutes to this ninth race at Saratoga. Um, I don't know if either of you had an opportunity to, to have a look at it. But this would be an excellent time to give the viewers some idea of who they should be betting. And, of course, as we often do on the show, we'll ask the, the, the viewers to send in your tips via the comments. Let's, uh, let's read them out. Let's see if we can find a winner here in the ninth race at, at Saratoga. Matt, is it as simple as this uh, heavily favored uh, three to five shot down on the rail that a lot of the people in our top ten have? I mean, she may just breeze right to the front, and if that's the case, she's probably going to win by open lengths here. I just wanted to try to take a shot against her. I went to the five awesome debate for Bruce Brown. Um, the most recent start of Finger Lake Straw line through it just because of the start. I thought the run two back, granted she was in a different barn. Um, I think that at least makes her competitive in here. And at five to two, uh, I don't think the odds should quite be so separated between her and the inside runner, three to five versus five to two. So the five awesome debate, that'll be my sign off for this. All week. right. I like it, Matt. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll root you in and uh, we'll catch up with you very soon. Fantastic uh, having you on as ever. And, and uh, you know, until the next time, my friend. Michelle, I love you. I love you too, Maddie. Thanks for thanks for having two minutes with me. See you guys. <laughs> See, it's, it's, he said in my contract, it says I don't have to work with that one, but I, I twisted yeah, right? his arm and we and we and we got it done. Um, <laughs> Tom has Tom, as he so often does, has an amusing comment: "Ducking your kids to talk horses, I've done the same." <laughs> <laughs> oh, too funny, but. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Mike Dom. No, Mike Savage says it is it's simple, as simple as Sadie. Baby. Did you take a look he, at this race, Michelle? I did. Yeah. I mean, you're right, right? The race goes through Sadie Lady, but my alternative was the same one that Matt landed on. Um, you know, normally if JK and I land up on the same horse, I'm panicking and looking somewhere else. But like when it's Matt, I'm like, oh, good. Um, <laughs> I think that the last race that uh, Awesome Debate and Sadie bumped into each other, uh, Awesome Debate had a big excuse. Plus, I love the fact that she has solid wet track experience. And it looks to me like it's pretty muddy over there at the spa. Oh, so, yeah. Most uh, definitely. That's going to be my alternative right there. Five to two. Five, we got a five-horse field here if you want to call it on the fly. No pressure, though. Oh, yeah. No pressure, right? Let's give <laughs> you it a whirl. I'll give it a whirl. I'll give it a whirl. I'll give it a whirl. Okay. Okay. All right. It's just my screen is so tiny. Uh, pop that thing, make it bigger. You can just... I don't just... know. How, I found my phone. I don't know how to make it bigger. I don't have oh, internet. Oh, you're on the phone. Delmar, well, that's going to be... Remember? Yeah, that's going to be interesting. All right, well, do your best. All right, so we'll give it a whirl here. Yeah. <laughs> Five horse field. I hope they have names at the bottom. That makes it easier for me. <laughs> you can Horses call my number like the, the Greyhounds. Oh, my gosh. That is so terrible, isn't it? Sometimes I do that, though. It's the Union Avenue field scratch down to five, going six and a half furlongs. And they're off and running. It looks like the two horses catching a flyer are the one, Sadie Lady, and possibly the five. She great. Yes, awesome debate. Awesome debate in Sadie Lady. But it's going to be Sadie Lady to put the head in front. She's going to draw off by a length, make it two. It's a little ways back to the six horse. And that is Diva Banker in third. The rest of them pretty strung out. As they come into the turn, it's still Sadie Lady here on the front end, and she's increasing that advantage, and it looks like Awesome Debate has nothing to say to that because she can't even come close to sniffing Sadie Lady, who's going to draw off by yet another length. 
Diva Banker trying to make up some ground in third. In fourth, that's going to be Irish Constitution coming in here off the break with Rosario. And it's a long way back to Hannah Dances who might want to sit on the bench when she's in the mud. As they come around the turn, Sadie Lady still has the lead, but here comes Awesome Debate. She took a breather, and now she's unleashing Sadie Lady on the front, and Awesome Debate on the other. Now they come down to the line. Here's Awesome Debate on the outside to push clear. Once she got free, she was going to be impressive in the slob here. Sadie Lady going to be denied the victory here at odds on, and Awesome Debate is no shot to lose this race as she comes home in front. Sadie Lady, in fact, going to wind up fourth there. It's tight for the runner-up. Great stuff. I don't know how you do that on the fly. I mean, a five-horse field, I don't you know, a five-horse field <laughs> m makes it easier, but that was a, you told a pretty good story. I think you gave up on the winner a little too early. That would be my one note. That would be right. My one note. The, the, the breather was just that, but, you know, you corrected yourself in call, and uh, Charles was impressed. Charles was okay, impressed. Okay, good. And I'm we glad. all are. I'm glad. That was, uh, I mean, that's not, <laughs> For folks that don't realize how not easy that is to do, that's not easy to do. You know what's and, hard to do, too, is because in my PPs, it's across four pages of PPs that I'm scrolling up and down through <laughs> to try to get their stupid names. <laughs> Next time, we'll give you some preparation. And you I can, know. Uh, well, you did, you did in the pool. I should have, when I got home, I should have, like, written it all down so I would have had it together. But <laughs> uh Oh, Joe is, we're, we're doing some trash talk. Um, we're doing some trash talk California, New York style here. <laughs> Until Del Mar gets a non-jackpot pick six, no contest, Saratoga still rules. It's hard. I mean, you know you're a Saratoga I, loyalist when you're defending our, our track after the weather we've had the last few days. I'll say that. I will you. say this. Uh, you're not going to, like, talk to me one way or the other. I love Saratoga. To me, there is no competition. Like, does Del Mar have better weather? Yes. Uh, you know, do we have some really great food? Yes. But I love the spa, so... To me, it's not like a one's better. It's just like you get experience two different things, right? It's like drinking champagne or going to like a trashy, dirty dive bar. They're both great. <laughs> How about drinking champagne at a trashy, dirty dive bar? I'm pretty sure if you are at a trashy, movie. dirty dive bar, there is a good chance you are not drinking champagne. You were drinking like <laughs> sparkling something or Jay Rougette, which is definitely not champagne. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor on In the Money Media. Not a sponsor at the Breeders' Cup. We'll just point that out. How about this from Jake? Best Besties hurt since Durkin retired. Hey, we, we may need to get you. We, we may to, we need to do a little bit more with this uh, this skill of yours. <laughs> I mean, the fact that you can do that uh, on the fly. You've certainly impressed our audience. It was That was one of the great moments. So in the, the original Horse Player Happy Hours, before we had the whole tour and we had all the, you know, that, that whole nine yards, we did have... A bunch of shows and you you were a special guest <laughs> are you shushing me my dog my dog is no, barking. I know. i'm joking the but you 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 pulled that club out of your bag like out of nowhere i think somebody yes. might have said as a joke michelle do you want to call the race and, yeah. oh what a cutie oh, this, is the show girl. this is charlotte <laughs> oh hello charlotte, charlotte. the harlot <laughs> <laughs> she's growling oh my goodness gracious what are you growling at dummy hmm? <laughs> Yeah, like that, the, I think that was it. We were at Santa Anita, but I don't know if I called the race at Santa Anita. Or I called the race somewhere else. I and it was it off was, a program for sure. Yeah, it was it was extremely impressive, as was that. So, yeah, we've got uh, a lot of props for you in the comments and out there in the world. So I don't know if you heard, Matt and I were giving our little Pat Classic analysis oh, all right, all before, right. before you before you came on the air, assuming now I didn't prep you for this, but are you are you capped up on Saturday or do you go one oh, day yeah. at a time? Oh, okay. Well, what, what wins the Pacific Classic then? Now, what wins? I mean, I just kind of want to talk about the horses, but I've been a Royal Ship fan too. since since he like came over here. Pretty much, uh, we had gone over to Julie Stack's house, and he was uh, turned out there before he started running. And um, so, like right when I saw him, I'm like, oh, I know this horse because he was he's so he's so good looking. So I'm a big fan of his. Um, you know, he ran okay the last two times. I think obviously the more ground is going to work in his favor, but I'm still like a fan of his. I think Matt Threat Independence Hall, chuck him out. He can beat me all day long because he just won't. Um, really, I hate to say this, but like it's not like a field that there's, you know, a complete stand up, right? When you look at some of the horses that have won the Pacific Classic, I don't think that we have any of those types in here per se. Um, Tripoli is really interesting too because. You know, it's coming on dirt. He's definitely found some new form. And it seems like Sadler, 
every year is bringing in a, a fresh face or, you know, trying something different. And I think that he's the one that could maybe be the upsetter in here as he stretches out to a mile and a quarter. That's an interesting notion. I, I, I you know, Matt, Matt had nice things to say as well. Where Did do he? you stand? Where do you stand on the, on the idea of how the track was playing for the, for the San Diego there? I, I had mentioned that I, I didn't think the rail was great that day. But mm-hmm. I feel like I've seen a few horses that were on the rail that day come back and run bigger. Matt wasn't convinced, but I think I agree with you that Royal Ship didn't run badly. But if you can upgrade him for maybe being on the wrong part of the track, I think he might supposed to be winning this race. I mean, I think that the track did play. Uh, the rail is definitely not the place to be. The riders were saying it. You know, they're saying, let's stay off the rail a little bit. Um, and I also think that speed really was a lot more prevalent and, you know, able to hang on for whatever reason. So that could have definitely played into express train being the winner that day, because he was a lot closer, if not on the front end, um, during that particular race. So, you know, I think Royal ship had to have the odds stacked up against him for that race or the conditions anyway. So yeah, he could absolutely move forward. But I also think that again, makes Tripoli a good player because he came from, you know, two, three, four lengths out of it. He was you know, way behind that field and was able to make up ground. Now he, he was in the more favorable part of the racetrack being on the outside. So he got like, that it was almost like it negated the fact that he was coming from behind, but I think that he moves forward too. So should Royal ship win? Yes, but I I like Tripoli if he's going to be any kind of a price. What other of these races are you particularly interested in either wagering upon or talking about from Del Mar's card on Saturday, particularly ones that might have a Breeders' Cup implications, but really anything uh, where we might have a bet? Was there any particular okay. race that caught your so eye? So in, in the ninth race, uh, which is the grade one Del Mar Oaks for three-year-old fillies going nine furlongs, no one is going to look at Havanika, I don't think, because Chad Brown sent in a horse. He's got fluffy socks in there, right? So anytime Chad Brown sends in the horse, it, it just gets hammered blindly regardless. We've got a Euro import in here. Um, we've got Madone, who I loved in the San Clemente, but I don't really like her stretching out past a mile. We've got Going Global, who's been like the predominant three-year-old force in here. But every week, Havanika works on my shift, right? Because we do XBTV and we split them up. I do half the days and only does half the days. Every single week, I'm like, who's that? Who? Oh, it's Havanika again. Oh, who's that horse? <laughs> it's Havanika. So like the last month, okay, I have been like gaga over Havanika, especially this last week. It was the minute and change was the, the drill time. You can watch the work on XB yourself. Like literally from the minute the rider like sets his hands down to go, she is like, <clears throat> and wants to do her job. She comes around the turn, she finishes, and then she gallops all the way around. I'm like, she could have gone around twice. She is fit. She is on point. So for a price play, I'm going to look at Havanika definitely to use. Like, can I single her on top? Obviously not. But I really love how she's coming into this race. And so I'm going to use her for sure. I think her best chance to win might be to try to take the bull by the horns. There's really not yeah. much in the way of speed here. Do you think uh, under Drayden Van Dyke this time around, you might see front running tab- tactics from uh, Havanika? You know, unfortunately for her, I feel like Drayden Van Dyke is not really a send rider. However, he is a stay out of your way rider. So like if she breaks as on point as we've seen her in the mornings, you know, maybe she does just naturally take him up there because like you said, I don't think that there's an overwhelming amount of speed in here. Uh, maybe Tetragonal is going to go to the front too. Um, but I think if Havanika is at least close, it gives her a really good shot to try and best some fillies that might be a little classier than her, but she's just coming into this race really well. And I would... you go back to last year, she was only, you know, a half a length behind Fluffy Socks when she won the Jimmy Durante. Right. There's not much, there's not much there uh, between them on form. And I definitely take that point that like when there's a horse that you're concerned about how they're going to class up, I want that horse in front of the others, not trying mm-hmm. to run them down. Would you, would you agree with that idea? Oh, always, always. It's hard to catch a horse. It's, uh, yeah. uh sorry. Right. I'm going to plug in my phone. Um, it's, it's no, definitely harder well. to catch a horse than it is to, you know, uh, be in front and, and withstand. Yeah. Even at the, I mean, now granted at the grade one level, obviously these are classy, uh, Phillies and, and and it's not crazy to, to think that they're going to be able to run her down but I, I like that idea I like that idea a lot and I think you'll get all of the 10 to 1 on the morning line there we're just looking Please, at our that leaderboard would be amazing. again we've got a developing story here Michelle David Browning our tour leader <sighs> looking I'm not going to say looking to put this thing to bed 
um, in terms of our tour uh, scores, but he is uh, he's got he's got that seven dollar lead heading into the last. He's got uh, a very logical runner in the five here at Saratoga. Dave is a great guy. He is the player for whom we designed this tournament, Michelle, because the idea was to yeah. create a tour that wasn't about having a bankroll to play in every online game you can or right. to be able to make a $40,000 bet and and not worry about the consequences. He he plays in the big tournaments when he qualifies in. And here he's getting a chance to play against the the muckety mucks and he's really shown his medal throughout the the 19 weeks or so we've had of this tour. Uh deserving um leader in the clubhouse right now, maybe building on that lead. Of course, we've seen uh in contest play, we've seen in horse racing, unlikely things happen. So I'm not uh expecting uh, it to be easy for him from from here on out but it is it is fun it'll be a great story to see him win another one we might have to have him uh we'll have to have him back on the show we'll say right now if david hangs on here we'll definitely we should one way or the other have him back on to, to talk in a, in a future show but we've been having a lot of fun encouraging the listeners to interact with us so if folks want to let us know what they think about these del mar races we're talking about um or uh additionally um what's going on in the next race at Saratoga. Chris wants to know if you've seen Soaring Sky work at all. That's the the Jessica Harrington invader that we were referring to before. Have you clapped eyes on this thing yet? I did not. I have not seen her work. When did she work? The 17th. So yeah, two days ago. So we didn't even have um, anyone that shot. We only shoot works Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, unless we have like a big name worker that's going to come in. So um, we're not there seven days a week, unfortunately. So we didn't have anybody um, on site to shoot that unless like someone just happened to know it was coming in and, and they were not shot up as far as I know. We didn't. So I have not laid eyes on her at all. Sorry. She, she's a little light. She's light on form, but I think in a way that's going to lead to a huge price. This is a runner I would want at least as a B in uh, my horizontal plays just off the old thing that we talk about all the time on these shows. And maybe you'll be offended by this as a, as a West coast person, Michelle, but turf form shipping West is not a bad thing to go with, especially mm -hmm. when there's a price involved. You know what I'm saying? I'm not no. saying that the West coast turf horses aren't good, but I think relative to the odds, a lot of times shippers coming, you know, from Eastern parts of the world. And that's even true in New York. I, I will a lot of times try to find a way to keep the state of rests of the world um, you know, winner, uh, winner of the big, uh, the big three-year-old turf stake here the other weekend at a huge price from the Joseph O'Brien barn. Keeping these mm -hmm. horses on side has paid dividends over the years. Right. I have no problem with anybody who wants to use this horse. I feel like a lot of those instances for a while, at least two, was though the the euros would come and they would add Lasix and it make a big difference. And obviously now we're not having um, the Lasix scenario being added in, so we do have to take that into consideration. And I just. I do think that it's easier to come out to, you know, from the UK or wherever they're coming from um, overseas and come here and be able to win. I do think that that is a good angle to take, but I don't just get them blindly. Yeah, yeah that's right. I mean, you got to look at the situation and, and especially the, the number one thing I'd say is look at the odds, you know, I mean, I'm especially not going to take a four to one shipper coming in but a horse like this that i think will be all of the 12 to 1 chris points out that the uh, jessica harrington not really known for shipping them over but that that could be a positive and i mm -hmm. not to be disagreeable michelle but i would argue that the lack of lasix is actually more of an advantage for the euros because they've been proven doing it more at a higher level than a lot of the americans so even though the lasix could be like a playing field leveler i know a lot of their horsemen weren't always comfortable with it just not really knowing exactly what effect it's going to have. I think taking Lasix out of the equation, I mean, certainly we've seen in New York um, this uh, this summer with these Phillies that they the, the, the Euros just, they just seem better. I mean, for yeah. for the USA, for the home team not to run one, two in, uh, in those key, uh, in those key turf races in the, in the female division. I mean, I think there's some signal in this idea that, uh, that the lack of Lasix thing only exacerbates the Euros edge in the turf racing. Oh, that, that's an excellent way to look at it too, right? It's horse racing. There's lots of, there, 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 you know, lots of perspectives. What are you looking at? Where the hell are you? It looks like you're in jail. <laughs> <laughs> in a way I am, Michelle. In a way I am. Or in the toilet? No, this is, are you in the toilet? It's not, I'm not in the toilet. What are and you talking about? You look, could be look, in the look, toilet look, right look now. behind me. There's, we got, we got. Like you're taking a poo. Oh, oh my God. 
Now exactly. that's over like the line. There's a little stand behind you're, you that like you put the toilet to... paper on. Oh and then there's God. like a no, no. cinder block wall right there. And the then cinder you... block wall in the prison comment is deserved. The, the bathroom thing is over the line. Though I could see somebody saying that my horsey curtain resembles a shower curtain, which it is, which it is not. No, th so this is my makeshift studio in Saratoga. We call it the Degenerate Flophouse. As I mentioned to Matt earlier, we're going to live up to our name. I think we're going to have like six sicko horse players sleeping in here come Travers. Um, and in that case, they will oh. be they will be sleeping in the bathroom. But it's, you know, it's... it's and that, that is the bathroom. <laughs> you should see what they want. Now, the bathroom, see, I'll show you the bathroom. That's down, that's down there, but you don't have it yet. So that's the bathroom. That's on the other end of the room. We're now, you know, very... Uh, appropriately in my little makeshift office. We got the, you see the Peloton there too. Haven't been on that enough this summer. Um, okay. Too much eating and drinking. You brought um, your Peloton to uh, the bunker at Saratoga? I, I wish so I could say. So you I, were packing and you packed. And you were, I, I just picture Pete like this, right? He's like, all right, I got my bag and I got my, you know, hat and my whiskey. And oh shit, I need my Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> and it's. I shouldn't admit this because it, it's. It's the most you know bourgeois thing I've probably ever said. I. I. I purchased a second Peloton. Where's my Peloton? <laughs> I love that. Oh hat. That is, yeah, that's actually true. That's actually true. Um, I thought it was the only chance I was going to get any exercise uh -huh. this summer, and it's basically been true. But so tell me about this hat. What, what, what are you? What are you rocking there? Did you steal that from uh, somebody, or is that yours? No. Uh, actually, it's a Stetson, and when we were um, at Santa Anita, and we were out on the, you know, on the turf course and everything, doing, watching horses and reporting, uh, it was like sweltering hot, so I thought I have to get a hat, so I ended up getting this hat at a hat Great. store that Zoe and I went to. It's a Stetson, no. and it's got little feathers on it here, and I bought this like vintage Hermes, uh, like stick pin, Love and it. stuck it in there. I love it. I, I'm surprised you didn't go for the porcupine quill. That that seems like something you could you know could could double as a weapon if need be. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even know you could put porcupine quills in your hat. To be honest, I've with seen you. that. I've seen that move. It would work with the Stetson. I love the Stetsons. You know, we got the um, you know we got the, the Christine Moore, the Blake collection rocking over here as as per usual. But that that looks uh, mm -hmm. looks like a proper summer hat. So uh, Pete Riley is impressed with you. Um, we, we would agree. We would agree with that. Oh, we have an I actual think... racing. <laughs> What's that? What did you say, Michelle? I missed I you. I said hi, Pete. Oh, you said hi, Pete. I said so we have I an actual. We, I thought you were talking to me. You're talking to him. Um, Brian Shields wants to know: hit the road or smooth like straight in the mile? You prepared to answer that question? Mo Forza. <laughs> neither one neither one we're going mo forza mo forza has a lot of people who absolutely love him i want to hear your version of the case i've heard this case before but i want to hear your version of the case room certainly uh you know stop the clock in extremely impressive time to say the least back in the uh, city of hope mile but you know that was a minute ago yeah, but this horse comes off the layoff really well. I mean, he's just not done too much wrong. Um, anything. I'll say he hasn't early anything wrong. Um, I think that he looked fantastic in his last couple of races. It's obviously um, a concern that the Lasix factor, but he is coming in fresh. So really, it should be okay. You're going to get Pratt. And overall, you get a pretty compact field. I like his draw to the outside, even though he kind of, doesn't want to be like anywhere particular. Um, I think it just gives him like a clean run to go. So I like, I like Mo Forza. Have you seen him working uh, leading up to this? Certainly on the tab. No. I know that's San Luis Ray. So I don't know if there's any video yeah. to come out of there, but on the tab, it looks fast. How much can we trust the, those San Luis Ray works to get a horse like this uh, ready for a test like this? I say I'm, I always take San Luis Ray works with a grain of salt, but I think, like you said, the times are good. I love the fact that Pete put a six and a seven into him. I actually had lunch um, with his owner yesterday who is quietly confident. And he said, Pete said the horse is doing really well. I don't think they would put him in this spot if he wasn't because there are options for him having not run a race in quite a while that he would have been eligible for to be able to run. So, I mean, I think they have to think that he's, he's doing pretty good and pete's killing it right now right yeah he's winning a lot and it's one of these things sometimes they'll do this exercise where you scroll through to try to understand what the crowd's going to do you scroll through a race in in six seconds 
And based on that exercise, though, my mm -hmm. only fear about Mofors is he's going to be four to five, isn't he? Yeah, he might be. And I mean, you know, what it, what it comes down to is hit the road and smooth like straight. I always felt like we knew exactly what kind of horse smooth like straight is. Um, he's easy to root for. He's easy to like. But we've already seen his ceiling. And I always felt like with hit the road, we actually didn't know how good he was. So when it came down to it, Miss Bowley had to choose. I was actually surprised that he chose smooth like straight over hit the road because I still think we haven't reached as good as hit the road can be. So could he potentially step up and improve yes he obviously has you know whatever issues he has because he has a ton of layoffs um but he comes back from races very well you know he comes in off the bench ready to run and he fires every time he's come in fresh so this could be a good spot for him florence getting on him again i'll be honest i didn't love the ride that Flo gave him in the maker's mark mile uh it, it was a little bit of a move into a hot pace if i remember right is that is that an accurate description it was like one of those moves where, like, I felt like he should have been closer, you know. Like, the pace was hot, but I feel like he should have been more involved. He kind of, like, sat there on him and then just, like, never really got into, like, a good momentum. I don't mm -hmm. know. I, was, I I wrote down at the time, like, junk ride. <laughs> Sorry, Flo. I love Flo. Flo and I have read. Oh my that was God. just not a good ride. Well, you're telling me I'm on and the bathroom. You're talk. telling me. Maybe it right. <laughs> Maybe it just appears that he gave him a, like a lackluster ride because the field was too tough for him, and and that could be the case, right? That was a big stepping up for him to go from you know California horses out to Chad Brown horses, so that could have been the case also. Let's talk about the no Lasix thing for a second. Um, so obviously we've got that run in the Pegasus World Cup turf. If you have heard, have you heard any stories as to other excuses beyond the Lasix? That might have that might have led to the subpar performance that day. Not that I remember, but um, and if I had known, I would have asked an Ophiro yesterday. And I can't use my phone to text anybody right now because I would love to do that if I could. Being <laughs> at Del Mar, this is the shitty thing. Oh, sorry, the poopy thing. No Wi-Fi. I don't have any Wi-Fi, so I can't like use my computer or anything. I have to use my phone. Um, I, so I don't understand I how of, you don't have Wi-Fi. How I, I is that? No how is that possible? Excuses. How is that possible you don't have Wi-Fi at Del Mar? You see where I live? <laughs> don't you see where I live? Hold on. I'm Let's literally in an RV. Here, this is what I look at every day, right? There's the cars in the parking lot. That's the parking <laughs> lot of Del Mar where all the owners and trainers park, okay? And you give here's me my, a hard time for living in the bathroom. my bedroom with my unmade bed. Let's see. There's the hallway <laughs> right there that goes to the bathroom. And then down there, that's where my kids are sitting on our living room slash kitchen slash uh, dining room. That's everything in one down there. And that's it. That was the grand tour. Oh my goodness. We're getting a question. So, this guy's, this guy's chimed in a couple of times. How do I watch Del Mar races live? Is there a TV option? What, what, what can you tell us about broadcast options for Del Mar? Now, obviously Mr. Cookie fortune, if you have what's known as, and we don't want to give plugs Cookie to fortune. anybody specific here, but if you have an advanced deposit wagering account, a betting account, there's a billion places online where you can watch it live. You'd probably need an account. Right. Um, uh, RTN. Um, but they are you know, free. That, yeah. RTN. Are, are they on, if you're on, are they TV, on YouTube you at all? PVG. Yeah, where, where, yeah. What, I don't what, know what, if the Del Mar races are on YouTube. I don't, and obviously Saratoga is when they do their uh, FSN show that they put them on YouTube, but um, uh, not that I know of that Del Mar is. But I know they stream sometimes on some of their platforms, and you could watch it on like the TV on TVG, or you can watch TVG, it. They're an approved partner on, uh, with Breeders Cup. We can talk about them. So if you have TVG, that would work. Um, but yeah, you just gotta hunt around, my man. Um, but the best thing to do is to get a betting account, and then you can then you can watch and bet. So I, I would recommend that, and I would definitely hunt around on YouTube just in case. A lot of tracks now are putting their signals out uh, out there. Um, Chris Couples makes the suggestion that I don't know uh, if they're allowed to because of uh, their ex exclusivity. Okay, so there may not be, but anyway, you can if you work at this, you can find it. I can't tell you everything you need to do. You're gonna have to be a little if, if you if you're still stuck, holler at me through the contact page in themoneypodcast.com, and I'll give you some options for the for the future. For today, you're out of luck. They did for whatever reason they didn't want us to show their races live, which is why we've pivoted to the Saratoga format. It is what it is. But uh, so Chris makes this point about smooth like straight being loose. My problem with that theory, Chris, or is my Neptune fear about, Storm? 
Neptune Storm with the same trainer as Mo Forza. Don't you think, you know, uh, I mean, don't you think Neptune Storm has one way of going in here? Now, granted, may, yeah, maybe isn't fast enough to keep up with Smooth Like Straight, but pace figures say that he probably is. I mean, I, especially from the rail. You send. And you're going to set it up beautifully for your stable mate. Yeah, it's win-win. It's probably the horse's best chance of winning. And if it doesn't work out, oh, by the way, you would become a de facto pace center. It's perfect Peter Miller team tactics, something that our man is not above. <laughs> he likes to win races. That is for sure. <laughs> you know, don't be so shocked, though. This this is an instance that could happen, too, right? Neptune Storm goes the lead. They take back smooth like straight thinking they're gonna like play and be like oh i'm better than you know neptune storm and neptune storm wires the field and wins right. that's a peter an, miller move too yeah he's enough of a threat that you can't let that happen if you're if you're smooth like straight but as i'm looking over the race i mean just the figure monkey in me is is coming along to your mo force uh idea in the spot my only fear being that i mean who knows with those other two big names in there maybe it won't be four to five but normal if you just look at the figures normally the way the humans bet this horse would be about a four to five shot. So that's, that's the, uh, that's the, the, the positive and the negative. I like it. We've got a question about this last race at Saratoga. We've got six minutes for us on this show. That's a, that's a ton of time, but the question is, can we go against Irad Ortiz oh, in this reduced field? We'll pull the race back up here and we'll talk about it for a minute yeah. here. What do you like, Michelle? Well, I think that uh, whoever's leading your your horse player happy hour five, Pop the Bubbly, trained by <laughs> Michelle Nevin. Uh, I really like Pop the Bubbly in here. Wet track experience that was relatively positive. Went to the lead, off of a layoff, was facing older fillies and mares in that particular race. Um, so, you know, looking at this, technically this race is open to three-year-olds and up, but there's only one filly that's four. It yells to three. So I think that that is a positive for her. Um, and, you know, again, coming in with the second race, with the race on the belt, I think that's good. The biggest drawback to me there is just that Michelle Nevin's on the duck right now over 22. I needed to break through. I think it could happen because we've got one here that, as you mentioned, the second race off the layoff attended that very fast pace the last day. Should get a very good lead into the race, I would think, from uh, Viva Zano on the outside. I don't think... Uh, that pop the bubbly is going to be too far behind actually on the tote right now is favored over the Irad ortiz jr uh, mount marvelous mod and marvelous mod has a lot of questions to answer second time starter first start on the dirt but i mean maybe chad exactly... didn't know it was on the dirt <laughs> well it was meant to be on the turf and i think he's just saying what the heck let's right. leave this horse in but i don't know i'm, I'm gonna work i'll pull up some slumber uh sire stats while we're chatting michelle on the dirt. I mean, I don't imagine there are many of them, but uh, it would, I wouldn't have guessed that he would have had that club in his bag. Of course, Chad Brown surely knows more than I do. But you get warriors reward in the bottom side too. So that's going to give you, you know, maybe enough dirt influence there. Um, but yeah, I, I, let's see, looking at the works, the works have been to pedestrian, but to be fair, a lot of Chad Brown horses don't work very fast. Like he's not one of those guys that goes out and guns it. Like he's not Bob Baffert, right? We don't see, bullet works from all of its horses in the mornings whether they run on dirt or turf so i mean the fact that he's keeping her in here i think chad brown's no dummy my friend oh for 30 are the slumber uh progeny on the dirt for what it's worth so we'll, we'll uh we'll, we'll see i i i'm okay. with you and pop the bubbly not least because you know the hunch play having you on and a horse called pop the bubbly um, that I, I'm not, I'm not going to miss out. I'm not going to miss out on that. We're, we're sticking with the beer now, but we do have the, we do have the, got the Walton Whitman beer right now, but we do have the champagne chilling in the fridge. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Walt Whitman beer. I don't know if that sounds very good to me, but. Oh, it's, are you kidding? Not only are they, not only are they one of our sponsors on the network, Michelle, but their, their, uh, their stuff is fantastic. I, you, you are, is it? Yeah, Are you going to give me one when I come to Saratoga next week? Wait, you're coming here next week? This is major news, people. Wait, what's, you didn't what's, know? I'm staying in the bunker. My my, my bunker? My, my my degenerate flop house? You would fit yeah. right in. <laughs> you're more than welcome if you're serious. How are you I getting coming, away from... But no, I have a place to stay. <laughs> How are you getting away from Del Mar? 
Um, I took I took a vacation and got it approved with my you know higher ups if I could go and uh, come to to Saratoga. I'm going to work for Fox for the Sarah for the Travers weekend. Um, so I will be up there with, with your buddy JK. That's he awesome. said, um, he said, hey, yeah, Fox. You know, I'm so big time now. I think there's going to be like 15 races on Travers Day. I can't do all those. My hair just won't handle it. My outfit might get um, wrinkled. So could you call in like a B or a C team? And they were like, hey, Michelle, would you mind coming in and being JK's understudy? And I was like, no problem. I would love oh to come. Can God. I get some Mrs. London up in there? <laughs> oh, you're killing me. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, we, we'll, we'll have to hang out. We've got a lot of good stuff. Looking like it's going to be cooking around Travers weekend. What date? When do you? When do you get in? Like, what are you just showing up for Friday? I get in, in Wednesday night. Oh, fantastic! No, no, I get in Wednesday night, but then I leave at like six a.m. Sunday morning. So, like, post Travers, like right from the bar to the airport. Okay. Well, that that's still going to give us plenty of time. Uh, plenty of time to to hang out. Tom says you got to just make sure to pack your Peloton. Okay, whatever you do. Make sure to pack your Peloton. <laughs> Uh, maybe you haven't seen my physique. There is no Peloton that comes with this, my friend. <laughs> We've got requests for you to call the, the nightcap here. It, it's another short oh. field if you want to take a shot. I mean, I, I won't blame you if you say you want to quit on a high note. That was a very good call, but it's up totally up to you. I I'll like having the two here. minutes let off. Me have, let me have a sec to write their names down. Yes, so yes, yes. You get, you've got, you'll have that. They're, right. they're not going to break for two minutes. I can filibuster till then. I want to let folks know if they enjoy <laughs> our pen. act. If you enjoy our act, in themoneypodcast.com, you'll find all of our shows. We're doing these shows with our partners, the Breeders' Cup and Horseplayers.com. If you don't know about this, Horseplayers.com, that's the place you go to qualify for the NHC, for the Breeders' Cup betting challenge, and it's where you go to play Horseplayer Happy Hour. Uh, we didn't even mention the, the these same $20 games that feed into our tour. They're also regular feeders for the BCBC, the best contest there is. You, but if you finish in the top 10%, so this week that would be the top 13, you advance to the Saturday qualifier. Um, so really there's three ways by playing these events you can win into the best contest there is, a $10,000 Breeders' Cup betting challenge, and additionally, you get to support charity. Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation. Oh, let's give them a shout out. They've got their, you're going to miss it by one day, Michelle, but the barbecue at the barn next week. Oh, no. It, yeah, it's 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 going to be it's one of the social events of the season. Great barbecue and you hang out. There's going to be a lot of racing people there. It'd be better if you were there, but there are going to be a bunch of other racing people there, including some of your Fox colleagues. We'll see about JK, but I, but I do believe that uh, Maggie Wolfendale is committed to attending. Speaking of Maggie, she's going to be my guest on um, Alabama Day at uh, at, at the uh, at the Brentwood, our other in town partner. If you want, and you'd like this place because it's like a fancy cocktail place. Who do you like? Sure... Who do you like in the Alabama? Oh, in the Alabama, I think Malifaux can't lose. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> she doesn't sound convinced, folks. I just think it's a case for me of Malifaux that it, going from being the, the hunted to the hunter, I think is going to work out really well for her. I'm not criticizing the ride. I think they did what they had to do last time. But I don't think it was, you know, run to suit. And given that blood that she's got running through her veins and what she's shown in terms of class and form and figures, she's going to relish the distance. She's one of the few who I think really wants to run that far. And, and I think she's just going to get an excellent trip, hopefully just sitting off some speed, stalking and pouncing and, and going on with it. I think she might put on a show. What, what did you okay. think in that race? I like it. I, I mean, I, I think Melifeth is very classy. Um, I've been a big, crazy, beautiful fan for a really long time. But I just don't know if she wants to go the distance. I think the horse that really wants the distance is Will Secret. Oh, that's interesting. You think a chance on, on class? I, I, small. I mean, she ran third in the Kentucky Oaks, right? Didn't she? Right. Like, yeah. yes. And should be flying right. late. All right. All right, you got your binoculars there? Gotta get my binoculars and, here, Pete. And now we'll hand it over like to Michelle. If you don't like Michelle's calls, you should turn away now. <laughs> There's no one oh, who feels nine that. Furlongs. I want to do a proper I want to do a proper throw here. And now we we turn it in the commentary booth. All right. We turn it over to the dulcet tones of Michelle Yu. Thanks so much, PTF. Horse is loading in the gate right now. Pop the bubbly a little unruly. We saw her rearing. 
starter needs to back her up because she's standing crooked and that's going to let her break badly. So starter should really be working on her right now. I still see her back legs a little crooked. Trying to load in the rest of field. Vivazano. Still waiting. One left. Horses in the gate for the nightcap here at Saratoga as the rain gently falls down. Is it raining candy? I'm not entirely sure yet. Maidens on and off the turf going nine. And they're off right for the lead. Vivazano, as anticipated, shoots out there, but is not really making her way over all that fast. So she's still going to be parked oh, six wide around the turn there. Oh, there we go. She's going to drop down and get a little bit of a better trip. But Haya Harry has moved through to be up and involved, as well as Marvelous Maud, who's going to be close to the pace, which is going to be set by Vivizano, who's now going to draw off, finds herself on the front end, which is exactly where she wants to be. She's in the clear, and she's kicking up mud at her mates. Raining Candy has now moved in on the outside. She's trying to stay in the clear as well, and it looks like her rider wants her to press the pace just a little bit, and they're trying to urge her to get closer to the tempo, which is set by Vivizano, and she looks very happy there indeed. Marvelous Mod is tucked in third along the rail. Right behind her is Pop the Bubbly to the outside, Miss Flincher, and Haya Harry now rounds out the field. She's just been dropping back continuously since trying to press the pace at the go. As they come around the turn, we have Vivizano, who has opened up by about three and a half right now, and her lead is decreasing as Marvelous Mod has been unleashed. Marvelous Mod in a matter of seconds closing the gap from three lengths down to just about one, although it seems that she had to maybe step on the brakes right there. It's hard to see through the fence. Towards the outside, Pop the Bubbly is now making a pour for it. Ha ha, see what I did there? As uh, they turn for home, Vivizano still holding on to that advantage in front, but Pop the Bubbly under drive from the outside. Side and she's going to try and swallow up Vivizano, who is dead game along the inside. Here comes Marvelous Maud, but right now she's less than Marvelous. And we have a little bit of a drift situation from Vivizano, who's now out in the middle of the track. Pop the bubbly, nowhere left to go. She's a little flat, and Marvelous Maud opens up along the rail. Vivizano, valiant to try and re-rally, but it's going to be Marvelous Maud for the win. <laughs> You've knocked the winner in two calls in a row, but that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I mean, again, just completely on the fly. <laughs> I love the humor. Um, it's great stuff. It's, it's, I, I you know, I, I, I want to, I want to, you know, Matt and I can still do the show, but maybe we could, we should just bring you in to call the races, you know? I mean, that way we keep People a bit of a lid that. on you with some of the comments, but we, uh, we, we, we get the, we get the race calls. Everybody is, uh, My everybody notes. is very excited. That was good. That was very good. You didn't even have to do the colors. So thank you, Truman, for making that suggestion. Joe thinks that the, the next shirt from the JK collection should be Michelle Yu yes. specific. We did and make the Michelle Yu version would just of the be, JK shirt. It would just be like profanity. Like, you know how like beep, 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 beep like bleeps. <laughs> That's what it'd be. Bleeps just and like champagne. Asterisks and question marks and, and hashtags and yes. all those things to indicate uh, obscenity. Charles likes it, nominating you for a new job. <laughs> Charles wants to be your, your agent. Tom was impressed. We all were. I do have to point out that you did knock the winner yet again. You're telling, you're saying marvelous. You know, Maud isn't marvelous. I'm, she's I'm, she's making the winning move down in the wood. What, what are you watching? Well, she well she went up and then she like paused, like she wasn't going to go anywhere. I mean, honestly, Vivizano handed her that race when she drifted out four paths, no, that's and an then marvelous Maud was like, "Oh, I'm by myself. I'll go." Yeah, but Vivizano I mean, thought if, she'd if done Vivizano enough. Had I maintained. Think. I think that she would have won. Yeah. yeah, she drifted out, and that also probably. I mean, granted, they were all legless in the finish, but the uh, th that didn't do Pop the Bubbly any favors either when Vivizano came out. But you know, it was it right. was what it was. But we had a lot of fun wah, with an wah. off the turf uh, maiden nightcap here at Saratoga, and, and you get all the credit in the world for that, Michelle. Really appreciate you taking time hey, out with everything. By the way, congratulations, on Slumber, on your there. There you go with Slumber's for first, first winner. Main track win. Yep, Slumber's first dirt winner. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Charles has the line. That's right. That's absolutely right. Pop, Pop the, the bubbly. bubbly I think I said was flat, which I liked. That was very good. That was very good on the fly. Dive, dive bar. bar. You need to just open a dive bar. I think you you could you would do some some mad business in a you know near Santa Anita or Del Mar with you know oh we gotta that go see Michelle. That would be my dream. Would I would call great. it degenerates. <laughs> The DG Lounge. 
That's the yes. name of our special area at Saratoga. We will license it to you. It okay. could be the DG Lounge. That I, like I would. It. I'm absolutely down with that. Oh, that's too funny. Getting ready for that these results. That could be my shirt, degenerate. Yeah. Well, we've got our. We got to send you our. I can't believe you know. I think I meant to do this, and I never did. We've got our degenerate horse player T-shirts. Um, yeah, I don't have any or, of that. I need to. I need to get that. What is? And I think I even asked you this question, but I don't remember what you said. The best. They're all men's sizes. What's the best men's size for you to oh, doctor into? Like a shirt? medium. Like a medium. Okay, get you a medium. Whatever Let size JK wears, I could fit into. <laughs> I know he wears his clothes I'm a little tight. I'm not sure how to respond to that. I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to be honest. I feel um, bad actually to be so mean to JK. Like when he Oh, he loves on. it. So much more fun if he's on here. <laughs> it is more fun when he's here to take the abuse, but he, believe me, he, in absentia, he loves it. So uh, Joe wants to know if you've ever been to New Orleans, the home of the dive bar. Yeah, I lived in uh, New Orleans for a whole race meet season. So I have been to several dive bars in new orleans they smell funny though but my favorite <laughs> was this dive bar that was out um off like off the freeway i guess you could, it's not like the freeway it's like the two lane and the two lane you know i forget what it's called there but like off like the main road and there's a little dive bar if you're leaving the fairgrounds on the left hand side and it's like out in the middle of legitimately nowhere and inside it's like got one small bar and it's got the derby owners game so we used to go like four days a week and play the Derby owners video game. That reminds me, we need to talk about this insane digital Derby you did, but we don't have time this appearance. We'll get you back on to do that. But <laughs> I heard nothing but wild praise for your performance out there. But right now, Michelle, we're just going to, I'm going to read through this final leaderboard. David Browning gets it done again. Unbelievable. Another win uh, turning into a stranglehold on one of these Breeders' Cup betting challenge seats. But don't be discouraged. There's other ways to get that second seat. You just need to play. Finish in the top two or accrue tour points, and you'll be right there in our playoffs, which start in just, I think it's about five or six weeks' time. David Browning, your winner, 60-20. Huge performance from him. Scott McGovern, Howard Johnson, Jason Kudla, John Twomey, Fred Morgan, Joe McKay, Dennis Madsen, Julie Laboyko, and Eric Kurzal. They also get tour points. Top 10 get tour points again. Even if you're not going to run down David Browning, you still have an opportunity to accrue tour points and get into our finals and win another seat. That way, the other three players who will be advancing to play on Saturday, Michael Cavana, Pete Dressens, good to see Pete's name up there, uh, and Michael Boreal, who's another player who I know has supported us along the way. So thanks to everybody for participating. Michelle, do you have a closing thought for me, for the audience, uh, ahead of this huge weekend of racing, Pacific Classic Day, Alabama Day, depending on uh, which coast you're on? I hope everybody has a great day and it's, it's a good time to pop the bubbly. Pop the bubbly. Didn't get it done today, but can in future. Oh, we had a nice little shout out in the comments that Vivazano, I didn't realize, owned, uh, owned in part by Stephen Christ, my former uh, boss over there at the Daily Racing Forum. Oh, okay. One of the good guys. Yeah. And somebody we need to have on these airwaves again soon. And Travers would actually be a perfect opportunity. For Matt Bernier, for Michelle Yu, for producer Craig, for our friends at the Breeders' Cup, uh, and the rest of our colleagues over at In The Money Media. Uh, most of all, I just want to thank everybody out there for listening, for viewing, for making the shows that we do, the owner's box. For coming the to the, the bathroom. <laughs> well, thank the, thank the plumber. <laughs> this show's been the production of In The Money Media. Our business manager is Drew Coatney. Our chief creative officer is the man who takes all the abuse around here. That's Jonathan Kinchin. I'm Peter Thomas Fornatel. May you win all your photos. <laughs>